Welcome to the first episode of the Cell Camp Circle Crypto Talks from the Living Room. I'm Rachel Jacob, Program Manager at Upright, and together with me here is my co-host Alon Chavi, co-founder at Upright. And in this series, we will talk about hot topics in crypto and meet founders and leaders who are actively contributing to the reconstruction of the financial system on Web3. We hope to inspire you with these ideas and the positive impact it can have on a global scale, as well as foster building on blockchain technology and the growth of blockchain ecosystems. So we invite everyone to listen in, whether you're new to crypto, a founder, or simply a crypto enthusiast. So from the living room, joining us today is David Casey and Ophir Abigad, co-founders at Resource Network, uh, to have a chat about credit in the crypto space. Credit is a topic that is so central in financial systems today, it's getting really interesting to see how decentralized credit systems are now being created and being utilized. It's changing the way we view credit, including a topic I'm very interested in, which is giving individuals around the world who haven't had the best opportunities to receive credit be included in a reliable financial system. Alona, what are your thoughts on this? Wow, this is going to be fun from the living room. I have my coffee here. You know, it took me a lot of time okay. to find uh, this uh, shape, uh, comb shape uh, glass. Um, so yeah, like you said, uh, credit is such a centralized, centralized uh, concept in, in finance. Um, and I just read this morning uh, again about uh, an experiment that have been done uh, by uh, Celo in Colombia, uh, where uh, by just giving uh, migrants from Venezuela uh, five, uh, $500 uh, uh, worth of, uh, of a loan, uh, it really impacts their lives, allowing uh, carriers to uh, uh, motorize their bicycles and really uh, double their, um, their revenues, their monthly revenues. So just uh, having access um, uh, to financing can have such an impact on, on people's uh, lives. And uh, also, you know, credit in general for everyday use, uh, the fact that we can dispute, uh, that we can have chargebacks. Uh, we have this kind of like a firewall uh, between our bank accounts to the service that we are um, uh, consuming is, is so important uh, uh, to get to a mass adoption of crypto. So I'm really curious uh, uh, to think together on uh, how does it look like on Web3? You know, and I'm really curious to hear your thoughts, uh, Devin and Ophir, about how do we de decentralize this? Like, does anyone now can uh, give credit scores to people? Um, uh, can we participate in, in giving the, the, cre the credit itself? So uh, I'm really, really curious. And I want to ask you guys, uh, uh, how uh, does it look like uh, um, on resource network? Do we need to dive deeper? Um, uh, to understand uh, really how to decentralize uh, credit. Uh, and before you dive into that, uh, I would also want you to introduce yourselves. Uh, so maybe we will start uh, with you, Ophir. Okay, happily. Nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, so my name is Ophir. I am uh, a marketing uh, chief in resource, and I've been interested in, let's call it complementary currencies or alternative currencies uh, for a long time, almost a decade now. And I think that uh, I'll, I'll tell my story very briefly as how it relates to what we're working on right now. Um, in 2014, I was working with a team that eventually made Bancor. Uh, they, had a, they had a product at the time called uh, AppCoin. And AppCoin allowed anyone to create this kind of complementary currency with a marketplace. Um, because when you create an alternative money, the first question people want to know is what can I buy with it? So it has to come with its own marketplace. The same thing that we have now in resource. And I had a very large community in Israel at the time of people who were interested in sustainability and good news and community uh, uh, you know, involvement and stuff like that. So we were able to get a lot of people to sign up and to join and to trade secondhand goods and piano lessons and babysitting. And uh, we were even able to produce an entire commercial for our project with actors and, and you know, cinematographers and location and pay all of it with our currency because people were excited about it. But what the challenge was that it didn't have a business model. Uh, we couldn't scale because we couldn't hire smart people to work full time for us because it's kind of hard to charge people money for using alternative money. Um, and so eventually getting into a very deep research, 
uh, I'm talking about like four or five months of like looking for uh, advice and inspiration and getting on, on at the time Skype calls, this is eight years ago, uh, uh, getting on Skype calls with like experts and community organizers from all over the world. I eventually stumbled on a Wikipedia article about something called the Weir Bank, Veer Bank. Uh, in which they created this currency that just between businesses. And because it's business to business, they're able to charge people transaction fees and that's their business model. And that's how they could scale and turn into a serious organization. Um, and it's all based on credit. You have to give these businesses credit in order for them to start. Everybody starts with zero and they can spend into the negative and then they repay it when other people buy from them. So it's a reciprocal or you know, a circular economy where everybody buys from everybody to become more abundant. Um, so that's the type of projects that I've been working on for the last eight years. I've done four of those, uh, but resource is the first one that's like properly funded and has like an all-star team. And also I, I should say one of the most important factors about right now is the timing. So many people are, are waiting for something like this right now and are able to understand other forms of money where six or seven years ago, people were like, what, what is this? It's not money. What is this? So yeah, I would say that's, that's my intro for now. All right, David here, uh, coming in from Berkeley, California. Just got back from Paris with some of the Cello team. So it's great to meet a lot of folks in person for the first time after uh, being on these uh, Zoom calls for months. Um, so my interest in alternative monetary systems, um, the gift economy, the sharing economy, started toward the end of my university years. Um, I spent a couple years ar traveling around the world using a gift economy network called Couchsurfing, which some of you may be familiar with, where you can basically host people from around the world and, and stay on couches and make friends um, with folks around the world. And basically, um, trust, reputation and trust was the currency of the Couchsurfing network. And I thought this is a fascinating way to leverage an un, um, underutilized asset, which was, you know, couches or were um, in our living room so we can talk about couches and beds. Um, and that really opened my mind to how to create uh, networks of trust that can exchange value without money, like fiat currency. Um, so that was the first one. The Woof Network was another one I explored a lot, um, willing workers on organic farms around the world. Um, and then eventually I created a network of my own um, to explore similar themes of the kind of exchange of resources without uh, US dollars. That was called the New Mundo Network. Um, and I launched that around 2013, about eight years ago. And uh, we worked with um, retreat centers, sustainable communities, um, eco villages around the world, basically connecting uh, together people that were interested in building this kind of alternative system using, you know, um, renewable energy, organic food, and um, other ways of um, producing and sharing resources without using money. Um, and I came across uh, Bitcoin and blockchain um, around 2014 as a way to um, send money around the world to our many retreat centers because they still needed money for, for some things. Um, and a year after that, I, I started to experiment um, with uh, a type of mutual credit or trade system um, between our retreat centers. Um, and we, we did a small pilot, it didn't, it didn't go very far, but we worked with an Israeli team called Kolu and basically issued a, a trade credit on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. I think this is about 2016 and basically enabled um, retreat centers um, in the jungle to issue uh, a, a blockchain asset that we called a room night credit and use it to um, you know, pay each other compensate volunteers and um, chefs and yoga teachers. And um, this kind of opened my mind even further to this like emerging field of technology that we could use to um, create kind of a form of trust outside of the, um, the existing monetary system. And um, yeah, go, fast forwarding a few years, I think today um, talking about credit, we don't yet truly have uh, credit in crypto or blockchain. What we have is like over collateralized leverage. So most um, platforms that people call lending platforms today are actually um, where you over collateralize one asset um, to take out a position in another asset. Um, I wouldn't call that credit because credit is based on trust. And these systems that we have today are actually trustless. 
um, which is a word you hear a lot in blockchain. Um, and so for me, there's a bit of a kind of conflict here. Um, and so what we are really looking at is what people in blockchain call under collateralized lending or uncollateralized lending, um, which I believe is, is truly credit because um, it is a system based on trust um, rather than over collateralizing an asset in a smart contract, which doesn't require any trust between two parties. Can you tell us um, how you're how you're putting in these views uh, into a resource network? Like, um, if you can elaborate on the structure, how it works, and why should it, why should I use resource? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we're building on a system called mutual credit, which Ophira mentioned before. Um, we're not innovating with mutual credit. Uh, it is a system that exists for uh, a century plus um, in its current modern form and exists in many more ancient forms around the world in, um, you know, villages and tribes for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Um, and basically mutual credit is an alternative. Uh, it's a complete alternative monetary system to the kind of fiat system that we have today. And mutual credit is based on uh, permissioned, reputation permissioned networks. Um, in, in our case, networks of businesses that mutually enable each other to spend on credit with each other. Um, so in other words, uh, let's say um, Ophir is a contractor and I'm a contractor and I want Ophir's services. So um, assuming we've both been kind of uh, signed on to the network, which involves kind of a, an underwriting process and a, a decentralized uh, credit worthiness process, which we are innovating on in terms of mutual credit. Um, so assuming we both kind of are accepted um, our, our balance starts at zero. So everyone in the network um, starts at zero balance. And then I hire Ophir to do some marketing services. I send him 300 resource dollars, which is our first um, unit of account. And my balance goes down to minus 300 and Ophir's goes to plus 300. In that moment, uh, 300 resource dollars are minted on the Celo blockchain and transferred to Ophir. My balance goes to minus 300. Um, we had to develop a new token standard to enable this form of commerce. Um, it's the CIP 36, Cello Improvement Proposal 36. And we believe it's the first uh, token, the first cryptocurrency um, that enables negative balance wallets. So today, um, all cryptocurrencies, you can only spend down to zero. And this is a big barrier to entry for many people around the world because it means that you have to figure out how to purchase crypto um, before you can actually get into the, the crypto world. Um, so with this CIP 36, um, people around the world can basically leverage their existing reputation um, to immediately start um, spending crypto and accessing um, the crypto world. So we think that's a really interesting um, innovation that we're bringing to crypto and blockchain. I actually want to share something. I want to share my screen for a second because we, it's, this is not uh, live yet. So everybody's going to be able to see this on this Zoom uh, first time ever. But I want to share something. We're working on a new homepage for Resource Network. Um, and the big slogan is give yourself some credit. And the idea here is that you're credit worthy. You're credible. And look at this illustration. I'm going to say right now for everyone listening, this feature is not live yet. This is an illustration of our future. But imagine if you have a good standing in Upwork, in Yelp, in Amazon, in Airbnb, et cetera, et cetera, you can see that for the more of these that you connect, you get more credit line on resource, which means that if you're a reputable business, you get 0% interest credit line on the blockchain through us. Uh, and that's something that we're very, very excited to share uh, with reputable businesses. Yeah. Wow, this is so exciting, guys, being able to... Uh... Uh, uh, to start off and then to repay uh, um, the credit. Uh, it's really, really uh, mind-blowing. And can you elaborate a little bit more about your credit system? Like, uh, how does it work? So let's say uh, I now owe to the network uh, $300. Um, how does the network uh, see that I uh, return that? And can you elaborate more about the, the credit itself? Sure. Yeah, so... Um, in a mutual credit system, there is uh, not what we think of as money. Um, all debts are basically collectible in the form of products and services. So 
Um, if you took out a $300 credit line and spent it, the way that you pay back that credit line is by other uh, actors, other businesses or freelancers in the network um, buying goods and services from you. Um, so it's inherently a B2B network um, because in order to get credit in the first place, um, you have to have a product or service that you're offering to the network. Um, and that's the way credit is repaid. Um, we have a number of kind of layers of uh, default insurance and pr protection, which I'm happy to go into um, if that's interesting, but that's the basic mechanism of, uh, of payback. Yeah, I, I, I also want to say, uh, oh, uh, that, sorry, Rachel, I, I just want to say that a few days ago, I had this breakthrough in my thinking, which is, um, you know, people are a little hesitant to take on any type of debt. Debt is not your friend. Uh, and just because we're in zero percent interest and you get to pay back with sales, it, the, the question is of how do we incentivize people to spend? Uh, and one of the things that I thought about is uh, we, we will promote you higher in the marketplace if you buy things because you're actually supporting someone else. When you buy, somebody else is selling. Uh, so you're supporting somebody else in the network and then we'll promote you higher because now you're in debt. We want you to sell to pay it back. So it works on both sides. And when you think about the, even the word mutual credit, it sounds more friendly than any other form of credit that you can think of. And actually our governance token is also called mutuality. And so we see a lot of the activity on the network as everybody is providing what they have spare to each other. Uh, and you know, your unsold goods and services is somebody else's uh, requests and vice versa. So a lot of it is facilitating trade, which again is why our main visible feature, the thing you interact with the most is the marketplace. Even though what we are is a credit system or a currency, most of what you look at is listings of other businesses. Uh, that's an interesting perspective. Um, yeah, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, going back to um, what David was saying about, you know, uh, ensuring risk. I was, I was really curious, how, how do you map digital identity and monitor risk within the platform? Um, you know, how, like, you know, there is credit scoring today. So how do you guys deal with that as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we are doing some really interesting things with identity. Um, and that includes uh, kind of digital wallets. And in the future, we envision an ecosystem where we have um, one wallet on the Celo blockchain or Ethereum blockchain um, that can be mapped to various uh, lending protocols and other um, decentralized finance protocols and that data aggregated um, to kind of a, a credit score based on digital identity. Um, right now we are doing it uh, much more like the existing traditional financial system. Um, so, you know, there are pretty elaborate um, credit risk uh, systems developed that we don't need to um, throw away uh, the baby with the bathwater, as is the expression. Um, so we are, uh, you know, looking at bringing off-chain data on-chain through um, applications like Plaid, um, QuickBooks, uh, as well as, uh, as Ophir mentions, uh, seller reputations on marketplaces like Airbnb um, and Upwork. Uh, so these kinds of uh, different, uh, both kind of more traditional financial as well as web to um, social reputation, but off-chain uh, data, we're working with a, a partner, Teller Finance, to bring on-chain um, and feed into our credit score. Um, and over time, as our protocol develops, we'll have more and more on-chain data about each business um, that can become more and more important um, as a factor determining credit score, because we are a little different than a traditional um, credit system in that a big part of a business's ability to pay back their credit is how appealing their products or services are inside of the resource network. Um, so the more kind of uh, people that want to buy from them, the easy, easier it is to pay back. Um, and we have a underwriting system that involves our token mutuality. Um, so we're a two token system. We have the resource dollar, which is a stable unit of account or a new type of um, stable coin. And then we have mutuality, which is kind of the network token. Um, and resource dollar is the only transaction um, 
token, and then mutuality is the staking token. And underwriters, which are the gatekeepers of the network, um, will stake the, the token mutuality and evaluate um, a business creditworthiness and then underwrite that business uh, by basically locking or collateralizing uh, mutuality. And it is a fractional collateral. Um, we're looking at a ratio of 20% collateral. So this is like under collateralized lending, which is like the one of the hot topics in, in crypto today. How do you increase capital efficiency? How do you unlock and allow um, capital to flow without, you know, locking up more than you're actually liberating. Um, and that, that capital, basically the, uh, the staked uh, collateral that the underwriter is putting up is one form of uh, insurance. And, um, you know, these underwriters that we're looking at bringing on are often professionals um, coming from the lending industry. Um, and then others will be able to delegate their stake to those underwriters to increase their ability to underwrite. So one of the layers of uh, kind of, insurance is that uh, locked collateral. Um, another layer of insurance is uh, from the network, we take transaction fees and a portion of those transaction fees go into a default uh, insurance pool directly that's used to cover defaults. And then um, another layer is that um, each business signs a contract upon joining uh, where if they are unable or unwilling to um, pay back the credit line with products or services, um, this contract can be sold to a debt collector, um, which can collect US dollars from the business in the worst case, um, and also ding their real world credit score. Um, because when you have a debt collector coming after you, the, um, you know, the traditional legacy credit systems uh, notice that. Um, and then a final form of collateral that we are also exploring is the actual seller profiles of certain marketplace platforms. So um, we're talking to a number of marketplace platforms starting um, inside of the Celo ecosystem. And uh, as partner platforms, they will be able to uh, either kind of lower the reputation of that seller um, on their own platform or even um, lock, lock access to the profile until the credit line is repaid. So that's kind of a form of um, social collateral that um, we haven't heard about um, other kind of uh, platforms using yet, but it's a very interesting form of collateral. I would just like to follow that up and say that the magics of mutual credit is that you don't need to pay it back with cash, just with your wisdom, with your hands, with your knowledge. And that is something that makes it way more viable for people who are looking to pay back. They will be able to, we will find a buyer for them. Hey, you know, that was something really interesting when I was, uh, um, going uh, more deeply into your website was that if you're in a minus, you can bring up your standing by just replying to your customers. And I thought that that was, that was a, a brilliant way to, um, to, to give people a chance to come back. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Yeah, we are um, building our system to optimize for transaction volume or deal volume because we think that's um, where the real value is created. So um, we don't think that real value is created by interest. That's kind of a zero sum game and doesn't really add net value to the to the ecosystem. Awesome. Awesome stuff. And I have two questions. So for, for, for the first question is what kind of services uh, would we expect to find on your uh, on your platform, and uh, uh, how we can participate? Uh, is it live? What is the current uh, uh, status of the project, and uh, how can we uh, join in? Ophir, you want to talk about Cloud City? Yeah, for sure. So I want to talk about two things. Listen, uh, everyone listening to this, uh, when we started this project. David had a really good idea. I did not know how good the idea was until time passed and I realized more and more how good the idea was. Let's launch this in a small physical geographical community and not just in any community in Asheville, North Carolina, which is a fantastic place and I recommend everyone to go visit. Why was that a really good place to launch? Because there's a lot of small businesses. There's resilience in the community around keeping the town local owned, mom and pop, no Starbucks, no McDonald's in downtown allowed. There's no chain stores in all of downtown Asheville. Um, and so the ethos of that city uh, really, uh, you know, melded into what we're talking about, and a lot of people loved it. 
And so what you would be able to find if you're in Asheville right now is a lot of uh, different things because it's a diverse use case. A lot of times when a startup is launching, right? You're an entrepreneur, investors and advisors are telling you focus on one vertical, right? Solve a problem for one customer. We can't do that because if we got seven people who have bakeries, they're not gonna trade croissants, right? The baker wants somebody to build a website and the website developer wants hotel nights and the hotel wants to have bake, baked goods for the bed and breakfast. And so you have to create these triangles or even you know these networks. Um, so we have a lot of different things in Asheville. We have, um, uh, uh, you know, from room nights to office space to digital services and so on and so on. Now that we've matured from that moment, where things are going is what we've called Cloud City, which means that anybody from the world could be joining resource with things that are mostly needed from other people. So if you have retreat centers or co-working offices in popular locations, or most notably digital services, SaaS products. So, you know, um, anybody that does anything that's like upworkable and Fiverrable, uh, all of those core digital online skills, you know, legal, marketing, tech, web development, design, at marketing, sales, customer support, those are core to what you'll be able to find on resource. And then on top of that, we're looking at a lot of SaaS products because we think that's just really good. If you could get your accounting software, your VPN, your web hosting, uh, and there's more examples. I'm not going to go into all of them, but just think what are the top common 25 things any small business or freelancer is likely to buy? Those are the things we're putting most of our efforts into getting available for uh, the resource credit system. Super awesome. And you know what? I have another question uh, regarding uh, um, the token itself. Uh, so does the resource uh, has also like a DAO kind of like um, properties where uh, the holders of uh, mutuality can uh, uh, vote on things and, um, and also regarding disputes and decisions like that, um, does uh, the token holders themselves have a role uh, to play? Absolutely. Yeah. So we are taking the approach of progressive decentralization, um, which begins with decentralizing the underwriting process. Um, and there are a number of uh, actors in the Celo ecosystem who will be holding um, mutuality and, and being able to underwrite actors um, inside and outside of the Celo ecosystem. Um, so that's like a big part of where we're starting. And over time, uh, more and more people will be able to own our uh, token through incentives that help grow the community and help onboard more businesses. Um, and uh, yes, we are we are building a DAO. Um, we plan to uh, you know get as decentralized <clears throat> as is reasonably possible, um, one step at a time. We wanted to go um, faster, but it's it's not easy. Um, to decentralize the things that we're trying to do um, immediately because we have to build them out and test them um, first and kind of uh, do it step by step. Um, but yes, our, our vision is a fully decentralized ecosystem with um, you know, thousands and thousands of token holders being able to create proposals and um, vote on uh, structures, vote on how um, underwriting works, how defaults work, um, and you know many other kind of dials that can be configured within the system. Yep. All right. So uh, Ophir and David, we would love to see a demo um, of your product. This is our sign up portal. Um, it looks like a Web two username and password interface, but in the background, it is a non custodial Celo blockchain wallet, um, which is one of the innovations that we are. Um, working on with our UX that enables uh, anyone to easily create a blockchain wallet and start transacting on the Celo blockchain without gas fees. Um, so here's our marketplace. Uh, this is basically the, the listings that are available. Um, we have a search engine that enables uh, filters by different kinds of uh, products or services and different kinds of ful fulfillment here is uh, local as Ophir mentioned in Asheville, North Carolina, where we launched our pilot and remote is the whole world. Um, so for example, and we'll zoom in on a service. So this is a social media consultation. Um, the price is 45 resource dollars. And essentially on this listing, you can message the seller to ask questions about 
the listing and you can go ahead and purchase it. Um, and if I click purchase here, then the transaction processes uh, on the Celo Alpha Horus network. And so that is basically uh, a zoom in on the marketplace. We also have a business directory. So you can search by either listings or by the businesses themselves and browse um, the different businesses. So for example, um, let's see, which one should we go? Here is the co-working space in uh, Asheville, North Carolina, where our Asheville uh, team is based out of. And uh, you can see the offers that they have on their business listing. Here I can see my own storefront. So this is a, um, a hobby business that I started and I'm selling chocolate to the, um, the resource network. And here is one of the most interesting parts of the products, uh, which is the wallet. So um, I can see the balance that I have. So that's a negative balance is a minus uh, 5,934 resource dollars. And I can see the remaining credit that I have um, to spend before I hit my credit limit. Um, and here's some transactions um, that I can see uh, and basically uh, can look at it. This is uh, how much money was sent, the date, and then I can um, look on the uh, Celo Alpha Horiz network at the actual transaction. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much uh, the product and we are innovating uh, very quickly. Um, there's more features that go live uh, every week or two. And we have a lot in the works um, for, for what's coming in terms of feature enhancements um, and more. Ophira, not sure if you want to add anything um, notable about the product. I would like to say, I think that's the last thing that I said uh, before you started to do the demo. Uh, one of the hardest things to do in new networks is to sign up. You have to upload your logo and all your listings and description. We have a really cool system where we do that for you right now. If you just submit a form with your .com or uh, your listing in any other marketplace or network, we can help you create your business very easily. One thing, and the other I'd like to say is in the future, it doesn't exist yet, but one of the features we're most excited um, to dream about is this world where you'll be able to check out with resource on other websites, uh, like a payment widget, uh, which is something that one, once we grow the network enough and we have those solid partnerships, we're looking forward to, to have made, turn resource into a universal payment option. That's it. Uh, wow, I'm, I'm blown away by the product, you know, and the level of innovation that you have here. And uh, seriously, guys, credit it is such a, a big thing, you know, uh, and I, I don't see really how uh, um, actual use cases will work without credit. And uh, your approach to credit is, is very, very unique and you're like going into the, to the heart of it. So it's like really, really awesome to see. How does uh, the token sell uh, is going? Uh, is it uh, live yet? You did an uh, airdrop. Can uh, we still buy the token? So our uh, utility token, Mutuality, is not yet live. Um, we did a uh, private seed round. Uh, we raised 1.7 million led by uh, Future Perfect Ventures, which is a really incredible uh, partner for us and um, firm that we're really excited to be working with. And uh, stay tuned for more information about when the token goes live. And I just wanted to add that uh, Alon was asking us earlier if it's live, if you can sign up. Uh, we launched in May of this year. Um, we have so far seen about $40,000 in transaction volume between businesses, and we've extended about $380,000 in credit lines. And actually, I'd like to tell one story, one user story from the whole network. Uh, there was a company that um, was asking, how could I spend my resource dollars in a way that is consistent so that I'll be able to sell my product on the other side. And they came to one of our uh, meetups and they heard that we're focusing on healthcare. And they said, that's crazy that you're saying this because we were just discussing how we can provide benefits to our employees. So this one company is now giving 10 of their employees uh, a couple hundred dollars in health benefits per month and resource dollars that they can spend with healthcare professionals and telehealth. Uh, and this is live, this is already happening. The employees are already have the money in their wallet. And a lot of times investors and other uh, uh, people want to know, uh, resource, are you only focusing on businesses? This is our answer. Now we also have employees of these businesses involved in the network. Very cool. This is awesome stuff. So thank you so much, guys.
Yes, thank you so much, David and Ophir. This was this was uh, really really awesome to get to sit down and and talk to you guys and get more of an inside look into resource network and a decentralized credit. What you're doing, it was um, it was a pleasure to be working when we worked with you at Cello Camp and to see where you've taken your project um, is really inspiring to see. And I just really love the direction that you guys are taking. Um, and I can't wait to see uh, what comes next for resource. Alone, do you have any any uh, final thoughts? Yeah, thank you so much, guys, for taking the time uh, to speak with us uh, uh, today in our very first uh, episode. And um, really, what you are doing is is I think so groundbreaking and also so uh, central to to finance in general. So uh, I know that I will be uh, keeping a close uh, look uh, at the project and uh, uh, follow up on your uh, uh, posts. Um, so thank you so much. And uh, you know, I invite everyone to come to, uh, to Resource Networks and uh, check out their uh, uh, amazing project and uh, participate. So uh, yeah. thank you so much. Alone, if I can, I just wanted to say everyone that has the business freelance um, around the world is welcome to join our network. It's resourcenetwork.co. Uh, and we've recently simplified joining. You just need to submit a form with your name, email, phone number, and business website or like Instagram of the business. And we'll help you get set up. Uh, so everybody's invited. Reach out to us. We're here to support you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. We'll see you next Bye. time. Bye. 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 Thank you.